if we have a water losing, it's lead to the increasing in osmolality of BCF. BCF osmolality is increased. What's happened then? It's a stimulated hypothalamic third center. Third center. What's happened after that is increased water intake and lead to the restoration of BCF osmolality. In addition to the hypothalamic, it's lead to the redistribution of water from intracellular fluid and increased extracellularized water and again restored. And also lead to the stimulation of vasopressin release, ADH, and renal water retention is happening and actually VSO the ECF osmolality. So when we have water losing, we have a three mechanism to increase the water and Reestable ECF cosmology. Otherwise, when we have uh, actually decreasing plasma volume, when we have a decreasing plasma volume, ECF volume because of blood losing, because of cardiac output due to the cardiac failure, because of redistribution of ECF, for example, increasing in capillary due to the sepsis. And arterial vasodilation, again due to the sepsis. We have a decreasing plasma volume. What's happened after that? It actually has an effective arterial blood volume. First of all, hypovolumic stimulate to secrete ADH, yeah. increasing renal volume. Then, activation of renin angiotensin or estrogen system. Increase angiotensin, which has a two effect. One, increasing all the stone, increasing distal sodium uptake, and actually increase the blood volume. And again, in addition to symptom, uh, sympathetic activity and angiotensin, most of them lead to the systemic arterial vasoconstriction and increasing the blood pressure. Also, constriction of renal afferent artery and decreasing GFR and increasing the blood pressure. So our body have a different mechanism, but the main one is in kidney. If you look at them, all of them pass through the kidney to restore the blood pressure. Here, we have a soft disturbance in fluid volume. After that, slide, I will give you 10 minute rest. When we have an expansion of ECF, extracellular fluid expansion, it can be three, Four. One of them isotonic. ECF is increased, but isotonic. What does that mean? It means we have a retention of sodium and water together. So it's isotonic. But the ECF is expanded. Osmolality is normal because it's isotonic. It can be due to the water. The water and sodium retention is often due to actually hypertension. Uh, it leads to the hypertension and cardiac failure and head. Is that actually the main one? Hypotony. It means we have a related water excess. We just retention water and lose a sodium. What's happening in osmolality? Osmolality decrease. It's due to the actually the dysfunction of glomerular or ADH excess. When ADH works too much, water is reabsorbed, sodium sometimes is lost, and lead to the hypotonic expansion of ECF. The third type is a hypertonic. In the hypertonic, we, we retention sodium more than water. Sodium is with actually retained more, relative sodium excess. Osmolality increase. It can be due to the Cushing syndrome or Kahn syndrome. These two syndromes, we have increasing all the strong and all the strong lead to the increasing sodium uptake. Otherwise, we have a contraction of ECF. ECF decreased. Again, we have a three form. Isotonic. We lose sodium and water together. Osmolality is normal. It can be due to the small intestinal fissure. Some patients, they have a fistula from the, the intestinal, they lose water and sodium together. 
and actually a small intestinal obstruction or polarytic situation. Later to hypotony, we lose sodium more than water and osmolality again decrease. It can be due to the dysfunction of aldosterone due to the Addison disease. In Addison disease, aldosterone doesn't work, sodium cannot reabsorb, and the amount of sodium losing is increased. And the amount of actually ECF also decreased. And hypertonic, we lose water more than water and more than sodium. Is increased. It's the commonest cause of diarrhea. Commonest cause is diarrhea. Diarrhea leads to the losing water more than sodium and vomiting, excess, sweating, all of them they lead to the and also diabetes in cyclitis, yeah, or actually ADH excess also can lead to the this situation. So uh, just these two studies in one minute, sorry. Uh, pure water lose for three liters. When we lose pure water three liters. If it be pure water, we don't have a big problem because we have a change in ICF and ECF and just 240 milliliter of plasma we lost. Less than 70% of total. So, seven, sorry, 7% seven mm -hmm. of the total. So we can handle it. But sometimes, fluid losses 3 liter. Fluid means water and other electrolytes. So when we have a fluid losses, most of them is lost from the plasma, near to 750 milliliter, more than 20 percent. So this situation is more dangerous when we lose fluid in comparison to pure water. So the 10 minute rest then I will tell you right now, you know. <laughs> Okay. I didn't see you in the previous semester. <laughs> you, you were absent all the time. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. The speaker will be with him and say welcome. Say what? Welcome. In a, uh, uh, Ahlan <laughs> Masala. You didn't know about Ahlan Masala. Ahlan Masala. And you say, I, I know I have been well enough and I understand completely. You know, if you go outside and ask 100 people, 90 of them they know Ahlan Masala is very important. If they don't know any Arabic term, Ahlan Masala is not very well. You can go. Sodium in our body is about 4,000 milli equivalent. We have a sodium. And about 50% of it is just located in bone, and 40% in extracellular fluid, 10% in soft tissue. Near to 70% of this amount is exchangeable between extracellular fluid, soft tissue, and bones. Normal diet contains 5 to 10 grams of sodium and is enough for your sodium level. Please do not use salt a lot. Some of you, actually especially Indian people and Pakistan, because they use a spicy, they don't, don't use a lot of salt. In a of salt, they use a spicy. But in our culture, especially in Arabic culture, yeah, so, you know, yeah, we, we use a lot of salt. But really, we don't need this amount of salt because it's in the uh, long time lead to the chronic situation and blood pressure. So the excretion of the sodium is primarily accomplished by the kidney. The GFR glomerular filtration rate, daily is about 180, okay? 180 liters daily we filter. How much is the volume of plasma? Like in the volume of plasma in the body? Three liters, we have plasma. The whole blood is a five liter. Three liter is plasma, okay? I told you in the 
Yes, yes. Ninety percent. And if you divide this one hundred and eighty to three, it's about sixty times. What does that mean? It means daily we sixty times filter the whole plasma, and again we reabsorb all of it. Actually, near to ninety nine percent of the sodium will reabsorb by the kidney is about 800 grams per day. And the major quantity, 80% of this, reabsorbed by the proximal tube, and also by the ascending legs in the kidney. Along with sodium, also we reabsorb water. First we reabsorb sodium, then water is reabsorbed. So depending on the sodium amount, we can decrease or increase the sodium excretion by the kidney. If we need to increase the blood pressure, we decrease sodium excretion by action of all the sodium. And otherwise, when we need to decrease the blood pressure, we increase the sodium excretion by inhibition of all the sodium action. What is the function of sodium in our body? is so important in transmission and conduction of nerve impulse. It's important in actually the solarity of fluid. Regulation body fluid level. Sodium actually can be transferred by potassium by the sodium potassium pump between and actually between inside and outside the cell. It's so important in regulation of acid base balance with function by chlor and by carbon. Is a function of sodium. It's important in maintaining total body water, in solar homeostasis, electrolyte balance. It's important in excitability of muscle and nerve cells, plus plasma solarity, ECO solarity, regulation of blood pressure, blood uh, regulation of blood pressure, just two times this came here. My mistake is important in PCO volume and actually other functions. The normal blood plasma sodium is equal to 140 or 45, doesn't matter, but 40. Less than 120, it leads to the lethargy, coma, and death. So, one of the factors in emergency all the time we check is the sodium. Excess sodium intake also can be associated with a risk of gastric cancer. Those people, they use a lot of salt. Gastric cancer, nephrolithiasis, this means kidney and stone, nephrolithiasis. So process, and actually then, because, yeah, it inhibit calcium reabsorption in the kidney, calcium will lose and lead to the slow process. So be careful about using sodium. We have uh, some actually pump and channel for sodium reabsorption and excretion. Sodium hydrogen exchanger located in the proximal tube and ascending limb. Sodium chloride co-transporter in distal tube. Sodium channel in collecting duct and sodium potassium exchanger in the distal tube. By this channel, we can to regulate the sodium amount in our plasma. We have a two different situations, hyponatremia and hypernatremia. What is the meaning of it? When we say hypernatremia, it means the sodium amount is increased, more than 145. So the symptom of hypernatremia include dry mucus, fever, thirst, and restlessness. And the most causes of hyponatremia are these. Cushing disease, corticoestrotropy, and pregnancy. Because you need the pregnancy, a steroid hormone called sodium retention in the body. So they are the main reason here. And the next slide, again, I brought the reason. But you need just know, Cushing disease, prolonged corticoestrotropy, uh, and pregnancy are the main reason. Also, some drugs like ampicillin, tetracycline, and esterate lead 
to the hyponatremia. Here again you can see the causes can be due to the increased impact or decreased excretion. It can be due to the decreased overall filtration, increased tubular reabsorption, pushing disease, so call disease, and actually other risks. And clinical features, as I mentioned, dysthenia, venous congestion, hypertension, effusion, and weight gain are the main reason of, are the main symptom of hypernatremia. But hyponatremia, it's defined when the sodium is deficient less than 130, less than 130, and more than 145. The clinical sign and symptom, the, it's lead to the dehydration, drop in blood pressure, drowsiness, drowsiness means, means what? Uh, sleeping. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Lethargy, confusion, abdominal cramp, oligurea, tremor, and coma. So hyponatremia is more dangerous. Oligurea means what? Oligurea, it means the volume of the urine is decreased. The volume of urine is decreased. So, hyponatremia sometimes is asymptomatic and we can detect that. And the most important causes are vomiting, diarrhea, and adrenal insufficiency. Here you can see vomiting, diarrhea, burns, Addison disease. Addison disease means adrenal insufficiency. Are the main reasons. And also drug like AC inhibitor. They are important. Just you should know those reasons I highlighted. You don't need to memorize all of them. And here again, for hyponatremia, we have excessive flux due to the kidney dysfunction or from a skin due to the actually massively sweating cystic fibrosis, or maybe burst, and maybe from gut, vomiting, diarrhea, fistula, they are the main reason, or maybe inadequate intake. In some person, they don't use salt at all. We have an inadequate intake. And the main clinical feature are weakness, uh, confusion, coma, weight loss, and tachycardia are the main, actually, symptom and sign of the hyponatremia. In two situations, when we have a salt deficient, the plasma volume decreases. So it leads to the action on kidney and it's produced renin. Renin goes and converts angiotensinogen to the angiotensin 1, then by AC by angiotensin 2. And it leads to the exclusion of aldosterone from Adrenal part and this aldosterone again act on the kidney and reabsorb sodium and actually lead to the salt excretion reduction. Otherwise, when we have a salt excess, plasma volume increased and actually renin excretion is inhibited. It cannot produce more angiotensin, cannot produce aldosterone and sodium resorption is decreased. So you can compare both actually together. When we have a, actually deficiency of all the stone, it's known as the Addison disease. Otherwise, when we have an increasing in all the stone, it's known as a con disease or hyper all the stones. It can be primary or secondary due to the liver disease, heart failure, pregnancy, and nephrosis. Hyponatremia actually due to the water retention, and we have uh, one disease which is known as SIDH, syndrome of inappropriate secretion of antidiuretic hormone. This disease leads to the increasing in ADH secretion in appropriate secretion. And when we have an increase in ADA secretion, it retains a lot of water. And when we have a water retention, the sodium concentration falls and lead to the hyponatremia. But it's not a real 
هر خونه از چه میاد The sodium amount is enough But because the water reabsorption is increased The amount of sodium in this volume is decreased So we call it sodium hyponatremia S-I-D-H is reason of sodium hyponatremia And the diagnostic for SIDH is that hyponatremia is happen less than 135. Osmolality also is decreased. And the urine osmolality, urine sodium is more than 2 milliliter and urine osmolality also is increased. They are the main criteria for SIDH. And the main reason, one of them is infections, like pneumonia, like Tuberculosis. tuberculosis and as It's a fungi and is a tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, it means? By it's a bacteria. Yes, it's a bacteria. Malignancy. The cancer of the clone, pancreas, prostate, small cell cancer of the lung, all of them, they lead to the some part of the side edge. Trauma, abdominal surgery, head trauma. CNS disorder. Manangi, encephalopathy, brain abscess, drug induced, tiazid, and yeah, tiazid is enough for you, you don't need to memorize that. So, related to SIDH, you should know we have decrease in sodium in the serum and increased sodium in the urine. Just these two. And the main reason are infection, malignancy, trauma, and sunburn. So we have an algorithm for evaluation of hyponatremia. So actually in the emergency you will learn them very well and also in the physiopathology of kidney. But here just we have a brief review. First you will measure the glucose. If glucose was high, is a hyperosmolar hyponatremia. When actually after glucose we check lipid and total protein. Again, if we have an increasing in total protein or lipid, it's known as a solo hyponatremia. It's due to the action of these factors. Then we will measure the sodium in the urine. There is a two situation: more than 30 millimole per liter, less than 30. If it was less than 30, we will assess PCF and also if it was more than 30, we will assess ECF. ECF can be decreased or increased. If ECF was decreased, it's due to the sodium depletion, maybe due to this reason. Gastrointestinal or q -tapes. If sodium actually was less than 30 and ECF increased, we have an excess in sodium and water together. It can be due to the heart failure, liver cirrhosis, or nephritic syndrome. Otherwise, when we have an increase in sodium in the urine, and we have an ECF decrease, we have a sodium depression due to the adrenal failure, redox of wasting, or actually diarrhea. Otherwise, when it's normal, we have water excess due to the SIDH and CP. This slide actually is somehow repeating of the previous slide. And some laboratory investigation of the value of hyponatrain. We have to check Osmolality, potassium, urea, creatinine, total protein, TSH, hematocrit, ACTH, and sodium osmolality of urea. Based on the information of all of them, we can decide about the, what is the reason of hyponatremia and how we can manage it. So, they were about the hyponatremia and hyponatremia. Then the second important electrolyte is potassium. About potassium, again, here we have a 3,500 milliequivalent, which 75% is in skeletal muscle. Potassium is a major intracellular cation, and actually, 
it's maintain the osmotic pressure of intracellular. Has many functions. One of them is related to depolarization and contraction of heart and in nerve impulse. You learn in physiology in the first semester about the action of potential action by potassium potential rest and other. And you learn it's so important in cardiac function. And one of the actually investigation related to the potassium change is EKG, electrocardiogram. For potassium evaluation, we have to know about the EKG function. The sodium potassium ATP as pump is so important and for cellular membrane temperature and minor change lead to the big problem. Potassium in our body, the concentration is about four to five. If it's increase a little or decrease a little, lead to the arrest in cardiac output and lead to the death. So all the time when someone comes to the urgent, uh, emergency part, we will measure potassium and we have to fix the potassium. It's so, so important to measure the potassium and actually by giving the fluid or other management, manage the potassium. It's about the requirement and main sources are banana, orange, apple, pineapple. Papa, well, you were outside right now. Well, but where do you go? <laughs> you have a big problem, right? Yeah. I hope orange, apple, pineapple, dates, beans, young potato, coconut, they contain a lot of potassium. Especially banana is one of the most famous sources of potassium. Normal level is about 3.5 to 5.2. And actually, the other strong which is important in sodium reabsorption, is so important in potassium excretion. All the strong, all the time. Reabsorb sodium and excrete the potassium. And decreasing and increasing of potassium is dependent on the all the strong function. About 90% of excess potassium is excreted through the kidney and 10% by GIG. Kidney can decrease excretion to 5 to 10 millimol per day and can increase to 450 millimol. <coughs> so you can see how can manage the amount of potassium in the blood. So the majority of the filter, 500 millimol, is reabsorbed in proximal tubule and the control of secretion by the collecting tubule and actually action of the office. One of the biggest problems related to the potassium is distribution. As you learn, inside the cell we have 160 concentration of potassium. But in the plasma just we have a five. And hydrogen ion, because just has a one plus positive cation, all the time is exchanged with the potassium. When we have increased in acidic in the plasma, it means H plus is increased. So we have to send this H plus to inside the cell and potassium come inside, come to the plasma. And increase in the plasma lead to the hyperkalemia. And otherwise. So the one of the most important factor influence the potassium level is a hydrogen ion concentration. And chronic renal failure and hyperkalemia actually they are important in the potassium concentration. When we learn about the factors, they are these. The blood pH, insulin, catecholamine, physical condition in an exercise and activity of cell membrane. So the first one, acidemia. Acidemia cause to the shift of potassium from the intracellular space of the cell into the plasma. So lead to the increasing in the plasma. 
Otherwise, alkalemia causes the shift from the plasma into, inside the cell. Insulin. Insulin is the first line defense against hyperkalemia. A rising plasma potassium stimulates insulin released by pancreas, and insulin in turn enhances cellular potassium uptake. So, hyperkalemia induces insulin secretion, insulin decreases the hyperkalemia. Especially in the average patient, it's so important because they receive insulin daily, they should know about the amount of insulin because insulin decreases the potassium. And we have some patients, they are in coma. We call it diabetes coma. And they should receive high amount of insulin. Okay? When they have to receive high level of insulin, also you should inject potassium. Because it leads to the hypokalemia. Catecholamines. Beta-2 agonists, they lower plasma potassium, and alpha-2 agonists, they increase the plasma potassium. Physical condition. Severe practice or injury, muscle cell injury, they lead to the leakage of potassium inside. Any kind of injury in our body, but Accidents. Because they rupture the stuff, they increase the potassium <laughs> in plasma. Because potassium will release from the cell to the If you remember the case in the first of the slide, he had an accident. And the potassium amount was 7.5 like that. Yeah. It's due to the injury and it's lead to the increasing and also activity of cell membrane lead to the hyperkalemia. So related to hypokalemia, when the potassium is fall down below three, it's known as a hypokalemia. The most sign and symptom are muscular weakness, fatigue, muscular cramp, hypotension and decrease the reflex. And also cardiac arrest. Related to ECG or AKG, we have a change in the waves. You don't need to memorize them here for this lesson, but in physiopathology, you have to interpret the actual waves. Actually, we have a T wave invert and also, ST segment is low. It's a kind of hypokalemia sign and symptom. So, in evaluation of potassium, all the time we need to know about the ECG or EKG. And we have to actually correct it by oral feeding for injuries, potassium administration, they can be benefited. The next problem is related to redistribution. As you learned about hydrogen ion and insulin, they lead to the redistribution of the potassium. Alkalosis, it means when the pH is high. H plus is so low. So because H is low, H is exported from inside to the plasma and potassium from plasma to cell. So it leads to the hypokalemia. So alkalosis leads to the hypokalemia. And we have a, another situation in renal tubular. When we have a renal tubular acidosis, the H plus in tubo is so much, so they can exchange potassium and actually sodium and lead to the hypokalemia. We have a three main diseases related to renal tubular, tubular acidosis. In the next slide, I wrote them. The main causes of hypokalemia. The first one is an increasing renal excretion. Cushing syndrome, hyperallosteronism, both of them, allosterone increase the 
expression of the potassium. And shift or redistribution of potassium, alkalosis, insulin therapy, both of them lead to the redistribution. Gastrointestinal or GI tract lose or losses. Diarrhea, vomiting, aspiration, for those people, they have a fistula. And some drug like insulin, they lead to the hypokalemia. Here again, the principal cause of hypokalemia, decreasing intake, oral or parenteral, transcellular potassium movement, increase in excretion. Those reasons I talked about them. And this pre symptom Leader, gentleman, and barter. You hear about them? No. no. You will learn. But right now, you don't need to memorize their details. Just know there are three syndromes related to the function of tubule in the kidney and lead to the dysfunction of tubule in kidney and lead to the renal tubular acidosis and hypokalonia. And clinical feature of hypokalemia, I talked about them. We have a problem in neuromuscular, like weakness, like hypotonia, depression, and confusion. We have a problem in cardiac, like arrhythmia, and as I mentioned, two babies in word, prolonged PR, and maybe prominent uvish. Related to metabolic alcoholosis is happening in hypokalemia. The next you're going to fall down, all of you, you know. Just some of you are oh, pay attention. You were busy from the first of the time. I don't know what you are doing. <coughs> but, doesn't matter. Plasma potassium, more than 5.5, known as a hyperkalemia. When we have a hyperkalemia, Again, we have increased membrane excitability and lead to the arrhythmia and actually paralysis, bradycardia, cardiac arrest. Related to ECG, it shows elevated T wave and QRS and PR is interval. Decreased potassium excretion due to the deficiency of cholesterol, additional basis. And actually the distribution related to the metabolic acidosis or insulin deficiency. It's completely vice versa in comparison to the hypokalemia. And we have a pseudo-hypokalemia, especially in hemolysis. So those people they take sample from the patient, they should be so careful about hemolysis. Hemolysis because lead to them cell rupture and actually releasing potassium from cell to the serum to the plasma increase the serum or plasma potassium. So we should be careful and consider hemolysis. If you saw the potassium is high and also some other enzymes like LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, AST, AFD, they were both of them, all of them they were high. It means you should pay attention to the hemolysis. It's not a real hyperkalemia. It's due to the hemolysis, or maybe sometimes due to the leukocytosis. So the main reason of hyperkalemia, we have decrease in renal excretion due to the renal failure or deficiency of aldosterone, entry of potassium to the extracellular actually space, and redistribution of potassium due to the metabolic acidosis or insulin deficiency. They are enough for you. Mm -hmm. Role of kidney in hypokalemia and hyperkalemia. In hyperkalemia, excessive losses of potassium in the urine due to the diuretic treatment, hyperalestronia, or those symptoms like Barter and Gittleman and Lee. Exactly. Redistribution into the cell, excess insulin. Decrease intake of potassium, maybe it's due to dietary or intravenous therapy, 
or gastrointestinal loose due to the vomiting, diarrhea, or actually nauseating habits. And related to hyperkalemia, we have an inadequate use of potassium in the urine due to the coronary renal failure, acute renal failure, addition disease, or defect in tubular transport. Redistribution out of self inadequate insulin hemolysis, increase in intake of potassium directly or intravenous therapy. So when we have an increased potassium entering into the cell, lead to the hypokalemia, insulin, beta energy, alkalosis. When we have entire potassium entering into the cell, lead to the hyperkalemia, growth hormone, alpha energy, acidosis, increase the solarity, and increase the catabolism. And the main laboratory evaluation for potassium, we have to check cell potassium, urine potassium, sodium and osmolality, and also we have at least formula and ECG in all cases. Also we have some specialties, tests like cholesterol, plasma renin, cortisol, and in 70 hydroxy projects. They can be helpful for final interpretation. When we need to check potassium, in those patients with cardiac disease, when we have an administration of drugs like diuretic, AC inhibitor, or NSAID, in diabetic ketoacidosis patients, when they receive large volume of intravenous fluid, in fluid losses, like in burn, and actually diarrhea. In those patients with renal impairment and those actually patients with weakness of unknown etiology, we need to evaluate the potassium. Okay, just here, we learn about the ECF water, sodium, and potassium. And as you know, here just we talk about the basic information of them. But really, you need to, in practice, in real circumstances, in the hospital, when you have a patient with a problem, and all the patients in emergency, they need to check about the potassium, sodium, ECF volume, and also when you are going to use a serum, if you don't know how to use that, maybe you lead to the death. Okay, by increasing or decreasing potassium level in their body. So it's one of the main important part in your actual career, but just right now you need to know the general information, but in physiopathology you will learn what is the actually chronic and acute situation in this patient, and in the hospital you will learn how to manage them. But right now, you don't need to know everything. Just those reasons related to hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, and related to water intake and output, ECF expansion and contraction. They are, for exam, are important. Mm -hmm. And for chlor and actually calcium, I don't want to do you a study this slide. They are the, actually, next part. Just especially for the dentist student, I use calcium because calcium for them is so important more than you. And also in the hormone, you will learn calcium and vitamin again. So it's actually type of bone with osteoporosis. You can look at that. And well, is a healthy and is a osteoporosis. For this reason, they are so prone to the fracture. You can look at their bone. Um, especially in the women after because of estrogen and actually uh, other steroid hormone, especially estrogen, it leads to the osteoporosis and they need to receive hormone, hormonal replacement of the HRT. So, uh, this session is finished. I think possible also for you is not important. And we can have a one hour rest.